Hello and welcome to another Josh Plays 40k painting tutorial. Today will be something slightly different. Uh, we're going to be looking at how we have based our Star Wars Legion models, uh, something that we are really fond of and the models themselves have, are really good quality, um, coming from Atomic Mass Games. Uh, obviously you may have seen a few of the tutorials that we've got on there at the moment for the clone and the B1 battle droid, uh, and I do hope to do some more in the future. Uh, obviously they're made by the same people who do the Marvel Crisis Protocol game as well and I've got uh, uh, one tutorial up on uh, Wong at the moment uh, and hope to do some more going forward. Uh, but yes, today we just want to talk about sort of how we were looking uh, to get these bases to look and how we achieved that with uh, what uh, products uh, and the techniques that we've used to, to do that. Uh, and really the overall look we were going for was a uh, Geonosian look, um, sort of based more on the on the Clone Wars themselves uh, and uh, and looking more at uh, the sort of second film uh, in particular where the where the wars started uh, as we really like that sort of orangey uh, sort of texture and uh, and sort of mountain sides and, and stone rock and feel it works quite well with the uh, sort of color tones that the models have uh, so uh, without further ado let's uh, let's crack into this so first things first, obviously, just to show a couple of the models that we have finished so far. So, for example, we've got the uh, the clone trooper here, uh, and uh, he's got uh, a finished sort of texture going across the top. And again, um, sort of put some of the uh, sort of dust and weathering up the model itself, just to make it look as though he's been running around. His armor would certainly not still be white uh, after uh, hanging around on the Geonosis. So, uh, and then also we've got uh, Darth Maul as well here, again, all finished up and ready to take to the battlefield. So the ways we've done this, uh, we, we started off uh, by thinking about how we could uh, achieve this uh, sort of orangey texture. And we started off by looking at something that we've uh, we've used before. So uh, Astro Granite, uh, for instance, which could have acted as a bit of a base and then we could paint over the top of it using the orange. Uh, but uh, instead we, we actually started looking around online for different, uh, different models and, and different uh, products that we could use and we actually ended up uh, using uh, Green Stuff World Orange Earth. Now this is a very similar texture to uh, to any of the sort of great games workshop uh, sort of rough and textures like uh, Astro Granite for instance or the Martian landscape one uh, but with the added bonus is that it is a very nice sort of vibrant orange straight away uh, and dries very nicely in a sort of ruffled and textured way which is obviously what what you want. So the only thing we have found is though uh, when you're painting a lot of the models you will want quite a bit of this. And then also uh, obviously they're mixing it in with some Games Workshop paints uh, and then also we had some stone from an, from other projects that we've had lying around uh, so we uh, decided to uh, add a bit of that in for different uh, different effects. So the process that we've gone through this uh, basing uh, particularly uh, for these miniatures is that my partner has actually been the one uh, doing a lot of these basing. It's something that she very much enjoys. Uh, I'm more of a uh, model painter uh, than basing. I do a little bit here and there, but I do lack some of the imagination when it comes to what you can use and the different styles and textures you can go for. Uh, whereas I sort of set her the challenge of uh, finding a way of creating this uh, Geonosian landscape uh, for our bases. And uh, and there we go. She, she set to work and started experimenting and going through different ways uh, that we could do this uh, for, for all the different sort of styles of models, so the characters, the vehicles, uh, and so on. So to sort of talk you through a little bit of how we uh, came to this uh, particular scheme that we went for in the end uh, for the Geonosian planet, uh, we started off uh, sort of experimenting uh, with the orange earth and first of all uh, put it all over uh, this one base to see what it looked like on its own, uh, just to sort of give it, see what sort of textures and ridges that it came out for, and uh, and and obviously once it did dry, we were very impressed with with what we had. Um, but while that was drying, we decided to uh, sort of test it on the top of other textures. Uh, so this particular base here uh, was put down with uh, like an astro granite type sort of texture paint already, uh, allowed to dry and sprayed. Uh, and then we put uh, the orange earth over the top of that just to see whether it needed anything underneath 
at the same time. Ultimately, we decided it wasn't really necessary uh, and the, uh, the actual uh, ridges were fine. Ignore the snow, that was actually another experiment we were doing uh, for my partner's Sisters of Battle uh, Army as well. Uh, so we were just sort of making the most of having the, uh, the, the terrain already here to, uh, to test that on. Uh, but whilst um, we were sort of deciding on whether this was the right way to do it, we were using the stones uh, that we had before, the uh, sort of brown battleground. So we did another base just, just with the orange earth on its own uh, and then scattered some of those stones over the top uh, sort of whilst it was drying so that they sort of properly stuck into it just to try and sort of give a different sort of landscape which obviously we then ultimately decided uh, to use for, for sort of different style bases. Um, but, uh, but ultimately that was a, a nice finish. What we did find though uh, when putting these stones over the top was that the, the sort of the brownness of, of them really did start to distract away from the uh, obviously the, the sort of orangey earth and uh, Genosian texture that we were going for. Uh, even sort of looking for the argument of variety uh, with regards to the coloured te textures and tones that would sit on these bases, uh, we weren't 100% happy with it. So what we then actually decided to do was, uh, with this one here that is just plain, we, we shaded half of it uh, with Fugan Orange, uh, and then on this one uh, just covered the whole thing uh, to see whether that would make any difference to the stones, which ultimately it, it did. It did uh, sort of darken them down and uh, give them a slight sort of orangey feel to them because it did sort of stick over the top of the stones quite quite nicely um, and then sort of moving from there we then decided to sort of dry brush um, the uh, sort of fire dragon bright over the top which then uh, obviously started to give them a more sort of orangey uh, and uh, sort of hue to them overall which we were then very happy with for, for this style of base. We then sort of came back to this one to try and see uh, obviously whether the shading was necessary uh, just on top of the orange earth itself and we did find that with the shade actually on it I'm hoping the camera sort of is picking this up but uh, we were sort of hoping with the shade that was on it we actually thought it was a, a nicer richer colour uh, overall so we did decide to stick with this as our final scheme so uh, to sort of recap we've got few uh, sorry orange earth just on the bottom with a shade of fugan orange on the top uh, to then give you that uh, sort of different subtle tone going on there. And then we decided that to sort of pick out the final details, we then went for a sort of light dry brush of Tyrant Skull uh, over the top of all of that, uh, and then a final sort of lighter dry brush of Fire Dragon Bright to uh, just sort of try and give it uh, some slightly different sort of orangey tones as we were going over the top. And once you've got a model on here, obviously looking at these bases on their own, they don't always look quite so impressive, but when you get a model uh, onto them, it really does sort of help bring it all to life. Um, and uh, obviously you wouldn't necessarily have a base quite so plain for this size, uh, which is then obviously where these ones come into it with these stones uh, to try and make them look a bit more interesting. And obviously that's what we've done with the uh, with the character bases here and for, for vehicles as and when we we get to them. Uh, but uh, the final thing we then had to think about was the, the rim of the base. Now obviously uh, very traditional would be black um, and uh, this was just sort of the black of the plastic which we sort of compared and we, we just didn't think it went. Um, we felt it needed uh, to try and in keep and fit in with the, uh, with the actual tone that we were going for with the bases. Now obviously another option could have been a brown um, but uh, again, it was the, the contrast was too was too different, and we we didn't really like that. So in the end, we actually went with uh, rat skin flesh, which is uh, uh, a sort of cross between a brown and an orange, um, and uh, and has a really nice sort of tone to it, and really fits in quite nicely with these. Now, obviously, the uh, the finished ones you can see here have already been been done, but you you get it's slightly darker obviously then the uh, then the model and the actual orange earth itself and, and obviously the finished texture that we've got but it does give a nice uh, sort of overall finish to the model uh, without making it uh, sort of look too uh, sort of silly in compared to if you'd had maybe a black around the rim or anything like that so that's overall sort of how how we came about for this particular scheme 
So coming back to the uh, sort of stony bases, we, we realised that the stone wouldn't work for, for all bases, uh, certainly with the sizes that we're looking at. So we've mainly focused these for, uh, and probably going to keep these for vehicles or special character models in particular, rather than your foot soldiers like your clones, your droids or your stormtroopers and rebels, depending on uh, what you're going for. Um, but what we were really trying to capture was the the detail that would be on these larger bases and special bases. So for particular, the two we've got done so far is uh, Darth Maul and uh, Anakin Skywalker. Now you'll have to forgive the fact that Anakin isn't quite finished. This is actually one of uh, Shannon's models uh, and she got very excited doing all the robes and the rest but she hasn't quite got round to finishing the skin or the, uh, the sabre yet. Um, but she has done, as you can see, a cracking job on the bases here, uh, especially for uh, round the feet where it's really made it look as though they are standing where they are. Uh, so we've obviously decided to go for those bases. Unfortunately we haven't got any finished vehicles yet. Um, the droidicas and the uh, the clones uh, sort of bike arc uh, thing that it comes with, uh, we haven't quite got around to painting those yet. Um, they are soon to be done hopefully but uh, uh, at the moment we have just been focusing on the uh, the foot soldiers uh, of the armies that we've got so far. So obviously comparing uh, these to the uh, the other bases obviously you still get a great amount of texture on the uh, on the normal bases for the foot soldiers um, but for the even though they are the same size bases uh, we felt that the characters needed something a little bit more special to help them stand out. So being that we were trying to get these models finished uh, and uh, obviously have the, the bases done as well with the experimenting that had already been done in the background, um, Shannon and I sat and did a sort of batch painting process of these. Uh, at the time we mainly had the uh, the clones to to finish so uh, we were literally sat one end of, of a table each and uh, and there was uh, Shannon putting the, uh, the basing materials on and getting the uh, texture paint down to dry while I was finishing off the dry brushing and the highlighting on the clones themselves. Uh, obviously from the tutorial for anybody who's watched that, uh, there, it's not a, a long or lengthy process uh, to, uh, to get clones ready for the tabletop uh, but uh, you do have to be quite neat especially with the black over the white uh, so that you don't leave a mess uh, or, or give yourself much more time consuming jobs like having to tidy up afterwards. Uh, so uh, we were sort of sat and, and sort of worked out how we could best uh, get the models finished uh, and still have a great amount of fun whilst doing it. So, uh, so that on the whole is how we've come up with our uh, Geonosian bases. Uh, obviously I hope this has been uh, helpful to people. Any questions at all please just reach out in the comments below. Uh, we'll be happy to, to come back to you uh, or if you have any uh, other tips that perhaps are things we could use or anything uh, sort of different you could have perhaps recommended uh, for getting this uh, sort of Geonosian landscape that we've got. Uh, always open to uh, feedback or uh, tips on how we can improve uh, the work that we're doing uh, but otherwise we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.